after a couple of very cold nights, I thought I'd pop down to the garden and check on the pear blossom. So amongst the varieties here, we've got some reasonably hardy sorts, varieties such as Burr Hardy and Louise Bon. Now, in a normal season, they're not troubled by the sort of cold that we'd expect to have. They will happily shrug off a light frost. But of course, what we've been having the last few days is not a light frost. It's uh, sustained low temperatures, and that can be very damaging to these blossoms indeed. So I think any, any temperature down to say, let's say minus one, centigrade that's not going to cause too much trouble you start going below that and you can expect to see a fair bit of damage and when you get below two or two and a half below zero then the damage is going to start to be quite extensive so i've got a little temperature and humidity sensor hanging up in the tree here just to see how cold it got and this device recorded a low of around about minus 3.6 degrees. So I think anywhere below minus three, rather extensive damage is to be expected. And the problem here is that it, it didn't just dip down to minus three, uh, it was at or below that level for some hours for, for the last two evenings. Now, thankfully we didn't get down quite to where the uh, forecast was suggesting that 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 suggested uh, as low as minus six um, and I'm, I'm certain that would have destroyed everything here but um, I think there has been rather extensive damage to these blossoms at this minus three to minus three and a half so I thought I'd show what the frost damage actually looks like at the moment because if you look at the petals they actually look fine. So at a glance, one might be forgiven for thinking that these flowers looked okay. Uh, there's a little browning to one or two of the petals, but really not much showing. But you need to take a closer look to see the actual damage. And, and that is evident in the center of the flower. The structure of a flower differs, of course, depending on the species. In the case of pears, they have multiple seeds, and therefore they've got multiple pistils. So those are the female organs, and you'll find those in the center of the flower and the male organs around the outside. So in order to get a well-formed fruit, the, the fleshy part that we are interested in, the bit we want to eat, that develops in response to the fertilization of those ovules. And we've got multiple ovules in a pair and if you get partial pollination or something fails with some of those then the fruit that will develop won't be well formed it'll be it'll be malformed it won't it won't have the proper shape and it won't develop properly in exactly the same way as for example strawberries they are covered with um, seeds and for those fruits to develop properly, you to get the, the classic strawberry fruit shape out of it, they've all got to be pollinated. And if you get poor pollination or some, something damages the, the blossom, then you get misshapen fruit. So it's exactly the same here. So the consequences of the frost damage, they can vary from some malformed fruit to total loss of the crop. What I'm looking at here, I think, probably is a widespread loss rather than malformed fruit. So the bit I'm interested in is in the center of the flower. So I will try and get some close-up stills of this so that it shows up more clearly. But if we look in the center of this flower, we can see that the base here is darkened and that the pistils themselves are rather shriveled and that is not a good sign. Now if we look across this cluster that flower is damaged as is that. This one here that's only just starting to open even that doesn't look entirely healthy. This flower is damaged 
but this one at the top doesn't appear to have been affected. Now of course this is only a visual inspection from the outside of the flower and to have a better idea you would have to dissect the flower and view the internals but I'm not going to do that of course. I don't have too many flowers that look like they might have survived so I'm certainly not going to cut any in half. But there's no obvious signs of shriveling of the, the pistils and the centre of the flower doesn't look particularly damaged and this is quite a contrast from its neighbour. If I look on a, another cluster I can see damage here. This one looks okay. That, that one looks somewhat dodgy. That one looks like it might have survived but then here we've got damage and these also are, are damaged. Now I think quite consistently those that are at a younger stage, those that have hardly opened, they have suffered less and it may well be that some of the, the clusters of blooms such as these may have survived entirely intact, especially these that are, are still properly surrounded. I, I would be surprised, looking at the number of flowers that, that may have survived the cold, I would be surprised if, if these that are, are still quite closed have been damaged. But I would say that um, a very large proportion of the open blooms have been lost. All right, so I, I'll pop up a couple of stills that I've taken from the centre of these flowers and see if I can show a, a close-up of, of the, the damage that, that I'm seeing here. So first to one of the damaged blossoms. So in this picture I hope it's clear that the, the pistils are shriveled and blackened and the, the centre of the flower is also blackened and those are good indicators that the, the flower has been quite badly damaged by the cold. And now one of the flowers that doesn't appear to have been badly affected. So the situation with this particular tree looks a little bit bleak but it is absolutely laden with blossom and that may have just saved our crop because there are still some flowers to open and it looks as though a small portion of these blossoms may have survived. Now if all of this had set fruit well as we would normally expect it to, I would have to thin this extensively in order to get fruit of a reasonable size and quality and it looks as though the cold weather may have done the thinning for me. Now I'm hoping that those that appear with a visual inspection to be okay really are okay and, and I'm hoping that these blossoms that haven't opened are going to be okay and if so we might just have got away with that. Now these trees do vary, this one seems to have been damaged the most. There are, there are other trees here where the, the, the flowers haven't opened yet and, I, and I'm hoping they're going to be okay. And this one seems to be just a little bit more susceptible to the cold damage than its neighbours. So it's a bit of a shame but that's gardening. In any one year there are going to be successes and failures. Um, I'm hoping that we don't get more extreme cold. It looks as though we're only going to be getting, let's say, a couple of evenings with minus one here in the south and that should be okay. Um, as long as we don't get sort of those temperatures that go below two degrees for some hours, um, those are the ones that, that cause massive damage to the flowers. I return to these later in the year when it's uh, clear whether we have any fruit set or not and whether the developing fruits look as though they're well formed. But that's all for this video, so thanks very much for watching and bye for now.